Hi, I've done so many takes, I keep on making mistakes, but I'm just gonna go with the flow. So today I'll be taking apart the Ambition Spikes to see what they're like on the inside. Not the uh, Black Panther Edition ones because they look right lovely and they cost me 80 quid. So I've bought another set of spikes, Ambition Spikes obviously, solely for the purpose to dissect and see what they're like on the inside. They only cost me 40 pounds because they're a different color and they're a large size, 12 UK, 12 and a half US. Uh, and that's the reason why they're that cheap, relatively speaking. I have a series of implements over here that I'll be using to take these spikes apart. But before I uh, do this, let's take a look at these spikes. Whoa. Wah, 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 wah. They are uh, a little green, aren't they? I'm going to do a little 360. Wow, wow. You see, you see the sound effects that I'm making now. Wow, wow. This is how I create this immersive sound. Yeah, you get the gist. It's the same spikes. Bloop. So what tools have I got at my disposal to taking these spikes apart? Well, I've got a heat gun, I've got some acetone, and those can be used to remove the glue from the spikes. I've also got some isopropyl alcohol, which I think is to clean things up. I've also got scissors, a Stanley knife, gloves for protection, and I've got a box so the liquids don't fall onto the desk. So I'm actually heading into uncharted territory over here, so I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna turn out. But I've seen a number of videos on the YouTube, and it seems to be a couple of methods really. One where you use um, acetone, where you pour it into the shoe, leave it for a period of time, um, until it works its way through the glue, come back and then you should be able to separate it. Another method is to use heat, uh, where you melt the uh, glue, and there's also heat and acetone together, which I think I'll be doing. Um, and if all those fail, I can always go for my backup, which is my trusty old Dremel. And if the Dremel doesn't work, I'll bring out the big boy. Now I'm just messing with you. So I started with a heat gun and a Stanley knife to try and separate the upper from the outsole, but that didn't work, so I then used acetone to put inside the shoe and left it for a while to come back. So after 20 minutes, I first removed the insole out of the shoe, uh, and then I tried to separate the upper section and I couldn't. Uh, then I realized that there was another section that was under the insole, so when I managed to remove that, uh, I then realized that you could actually separate the shoe from the inside rather than the outside. So as you can see, there are bits at the bottom there that you can pull to separate the upper segment of the shoe. So I put some more acetone and then left it for another 20 minutes. So when I came back, I used a heat gun to try and help melt the glue a little bit. Uh, also armed with pliers to get a bit more leverage. Using the Stanley knife to get underneath the upper, a bit of acetone. And these methods worked out really well until I reached the front where it was difficult to access and also it was glued in stronger at the front. So I just decided to cut it with scissors. And once I cut it, the upper section I had a bit more access and leverage to remove the remaining bits. So the next thing I was gonna remove was the black outsole plate and guess what I used? I think I was watching Cylon Apple TV whilst the acetone was setting, but either way, I used the Stanley knife to work between the black outsole plate and the green foam. Uh, used the heat gun quite a bit, uh, and also an additional bit of acetone. Worked my way around until I eventually managed to remove the black outsole plate. Wasn't a clean job because a little bit of foam was left in it. Then I used the heat gun to remove the residue glue to reveal the wishbone plate. And finally, more acetone for the next step. Now getting into the interesting stuff, the wishbone spike plate. Um, same thing as before, Stanley knife, heat gun, blah de blah de blah, you get the gist, was taking quite a bit of a while, so I decided to deploy a different method. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't really expect to use a Dremel with a cutting disc attachment, but I was getting quite desperate because that spike plate was stuck on there very, very well. Uh, most of the work actually was done using the Stanley knife, working my way around that spike plate. I even tried to use some isopropyl alcohol for a change to see if that made any difference. Didn't really make any difference. I just had to carry on cutting around that plate uh, to eventually release it using scissors, 
but as you can see, quite a bit of foam was left at the bottom of the spike plate. So fresh and so clean. And to deal with that, guess who's back? You gotta love the diversity of a Dremel tool, other rotary devices available. Lightning. Now the next thing was to take the Light Strike Pro foam out uh, and I bought myself a craft knife set because uh, I had a bit of extra precision and also the blades were sharper um, and I was trying to cut my way through it but it was really difficult because the Light Strike Pro foam was in certain sections kind of sandwiched between the green foam um, so I was kind of cutting in 3D and going along the contours so it took a bit of time but got there in the end. I then tried to remove the grip from the bottom of the sole, but I realized I was taking a bit of the foam out, so I left it. And to finally finish, I was removing the stitching that was connecting the tongue to the heel uh, on one side of the shoe. Blue. And here they are, the various components that make up the Adizero Ambition Spikes. So let's first of all start off by looking at the outsole. This can kind of be thought of as a two-part construction. So looking at the first part over here, this is a rubber material. This is where the spike pins go. It also has a grip for traction. And this is obviously the front of the foot when you're landing when you're running. Uh, it's got some kind of flexibility to it. So moving on to the next segment that can be thought of as the outsole. This is a uh, kind of a foamy construction. Uh, now I say can be thought of as the outsole because it's also thought of as the midsole as well. So it's kind of an outsole midsole. But whatever it is, it's some kind of a foamy construction. So if we flip it, look at the other side, you'll see some additional grip uh, that's glued on to the material. I tried to remove it, but it was very difficult. It's almost as though it's kind of bonded onto the material. I'm sure with a bit of persistence, I would have been able to take it apart, but I left it as it is. Either way, um, I would imagine that this uh, outsole midsole uh, construction serves two purposes. One, it gives strength and rigidity to the shoe and two, it provides uh, cushioning to the runner. So when I press on the foam, it gives, uh, absorbs the impact there. So I can now add these two segments together, like that. Now moving on to the next section, uh, the midsole. This is the Light Strike Pro Foam. If you look at that over there, like that. And it's really, really light. So if I bring the scales over there and I weigh it, it says 14 and a half grams. It's probably up to 20 grams because I didn't take it all apart. There's a little bit of the Light Strike Pro foam left in the other segments of the shoe. But either way, it's quite light. Um, what I will say is if I bring the uh, other spike over there, it'll be a bit clearer. And I show you the side profile of the Light Strike Pro foam, you'll see a circle marking on its own. There's one at the end as well. But with the Prime SP 2.0s, there's two circle markings right next to each other. Uh, now I would imagine this is a identification mark in the manufacturing to distinguish between the foams for the different spikes. Just an interesting thing to note. Now going back to the Light Strike Pro foam over here. Um, now when I push this together and squeeze it between my hands, it's really trying to go back to its original form. So you can understand that energy return that's coming from that Light Strike Pro foam. So I would imagine with the Prime SP 2.0s, because it has a more dense foam, it will give you a greater energy return. So we can now place that foam on top of the other foam section over there. So the next thing we'll look at is the spike plate. This is the wishbone spike plate that I was very interested in finding out about. It looks very similar to the one on the Prime SP 2.0s. But either way, the uh, purpose of the spike plate is to provide efficient energy return. So when you're landing and that force that's being pushed onto the ground, as you're coming out onto the toe up face, it propels you forward. So it's like a spring action. So as you're landing there, it propels you forward. See, I can feel that pushing out really. Uh, and if I show you that over there like this, you can, you can see it's really got a bit of force coming out of it really. Now if I flip it and look at the other side, you'll see there's some strengthening beams over there. I would assume this is to make this section quite rigid and this bit is kind of obviously a bit more flexible. So the whole construction is giving you that energy return. So I can now place that on top of the foams over there. Um, so you can see that section over there. Now, adding it all together, uh, when you're landing like that, you're getting that beam that's giving you that force into the floor. And when you're pushing into the floor, that foam is being compressed. And as you're coming out into the toe up phase, 
both the foam is propelling you forward and the uh, spike plate is propelling you forward as well. So an, an interesting construction over there. So moving on to the next segment, this uh, material, I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure this is to hold the spike plate in place. This is obviously glued onto the foam uh, and this is glued on top of that to keep it in place. So we then have our insole that goes on top of that segment over there and that obviously provides a bit of cushioning and comfort for the uh, user. And finally we have the upper uh, section which is a mesh material, so this is a breathable material. Uh, now if you look at the heel at the back over there, that shape is further strengthened by uh, this kind of cardboardy material, whatever it is, uh, it's, um, it's there uh, to keep that shape at the back really. And if we look at the corners there, at the edges of the actual uh, heel, we've got some kind of uh, cushiony material over there, and that's obviously there to provide uh, heel protection, really. And if I look on the inside, you can see it's, it's some foam. Now, if we look at the front of the shoe, we'll see the tongue. This is actually stitched onto the side. Um, so I've heard that some people have ripped this apart, but I think you'd have to really pull really hard for this to rip really. Uh, I'll show you the other section over there. I, I actually cut the actual stitches over there. It's quite a lot of stitching uh, to kind of hold it in place really. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the uh, upper section. Now what I'll say about the upper section over there is that mesh material, uh, one of my friends has uh, some ambition spikes and he said, uh, after wearing them a couple of times, he had some holes come out of the mesh like this. Now this is only there because I was using a heat gun and that kind of melted it really. Uh, but the uh, uh, Ambition spikes that I got, the Black Panther Edition one, I've had them for over three months and I haven't had that issue really. So it could have been a defective shoe or it could have been uh, an earlier version that wasn't constructed as well or the materials weren't, weren't as good as the later ones really. But either way, whatever it is really, uh, these are very well constructed uh, spikes really. Now I may have not done a great job at taking these spikes apart, but you get the idea of how it's constructed really. If anybody's got ideas on how to take them apart better than I can, I'm more than happy to hear about it because I may uh, tackle the other side at some point armed with the knowledge that I gained on these spikes really. So I stick them side by side so you can get a better look at them like that. But yeah, I hope you learned something from this video uh, and enjoyed it. I would say as much as I did doing it, but it was kind of a difficult video to do. I did really enjoy it, but it was hard work. So until the next video, thank you for watching.